I would start with, uh, with the first question, which is, of course, a nasty one, but uh, myself and Alessandro are quite good friends. And uh, uh, why a book on innovation? Why uh, another book on innovation? And, uh, and why is it relevant today you know, to talk about innovation? I think you're absolutely right. So innovation is, is, a, is a big topic. Everyone is doing it. They've been doing it for, for a very long time. I think that uh, the, what we try to do with the books are, at the same time, into pulling in two directions. This book tries to make innovation a lot more accessible and demystify it. Innovation is for everyone. As you say, we innovate all the time. Can we do it better? And so that's the first thing that we hope the book does. The second thing, and maybe we'll discuss this a bit more uh, tonight, I want to make uh, innovation less, uh, less uh, trivial, less basic. Innovation is not about having one good idea or doing one workshop or one initiative. That doesn't work. We know that doesn't work. And so as more and more companies invest in trying to be more innovative, they need to, to, be, to get better at it. Innovation is much easier than you think, and it's also much harder than you think. And we hope that the, the book helps readers in both ways. Okay, that's, uh, that's definitely a, a good starting point. You know, I think that uh, whatever we do in life, especially in innovation, you need to have a little bit of the ending point very clear uh, uh, in your mind, and then probably innovation will have an impact if you do it like that. How actually innovation can be uh, everybody's business Absolutely. in a company, of course. The way we talk about innovation uh, in, in business these days mostly happens at the level of what we call the business model. Innovation means that you create, deliver, and capture value in any way. So you can do that with a new technology, with a new product, with a new service that you invent in the skunk course or in the R&D department. You can invent new solutions, but then the way you bring them to market, the way you communicate the value and the way you capture value, that's really where innovation happens. And you can't do that from the, the underground uh, lab, as you said. So I think that the first level of, uh, of discussion as a professor of business is precisely that. Innovation happens in interactions and engagement with the market, with the ecosystem, and it's, uh, <laughs> it needs a, a daylight. Well, yeah. This is, this is definitely true. And uh, how do you see innovation in, uh, in the sector where we are? You know, and, and how can we have an impact? Most of the people I ask who my customer is, they will tell me students. And if I ask them what do I sell students, they will tell me education and knowledge. And that's a very, very narrow and inaccurate way of looking at what we do. I think, and I say this to my students very openly, don't come to me as my customer. I'm not here to please you. My customer is the company that's going to hire you. You are my product. I'll put you through all sorts of harsh tests because I want you to come out the best product that there is so that three years from now, some guy who hires you will think, wow, someone must have done some good work for you. So that is not obvious, especially in business schools. As you know, I mean, there are many business schools that try to, to cater to students by pleasing them and, uh, and with flashy offering. I mean, of course, we have to play that game a little bit, but we, we must not forget, as you said, our mission is different. Our mission is to create value for the, the economy and for society. So if I knew that one of my students made a lot of money by cheating customers, I would consider myself a massive failure as an educator, as a professional. Like my, my life mission is to prevent that from happening. And going back to, to, to your book, because uh, uh, I, we touch innovation in, uh, in our industry, and, um, and I want to know more on, about the culture, you know, so because given that, provided that we, that we actually train students and uh, uh, executive uh, in the right way, and uh, apparently we're doing very well at the ACP, but then, of course, we have an impact on their value, on their culture, and how this can be really an enabler to innovation. I would say maybe one, one thing. Every day when we talk about innovation these days, uh, we hear that the culture that supports innovation 
must become forgiving or acceptance of errors and mistakes. I think that uh, this is a language that I disagree with. I don't say we should be acceptant, yes. I don't think that what you see is a mistake. In a, in, a, in a traditional organization, if you take resources and you try to achieve a result and you don't succeed immediately, you say, that's a mistake. But in what we do, in academia, in research, in learning, in, in education, there's no such thing as a mistake. That's the process through which you get to a result. We don't call it a mistake. I run 20 experiments, 19 of them don't give me the expected results, the last one does. Yeah, that's what you do. I didn't do 19 mistakes. I run 20 experiments because that's the process, that's what it requires. I think that the language that business and other organizations use uh, puts them already at a disadvantage. So culture is a very rich concept and the language we use only represents one tiny bit of it. But that's an example. So when, when students come to my classes here or our classes here, you ask them questions, they don't know the answer. Of course, why would you know the answer? I mean, you're here to learn. And then if at the end you know the answer, the fact that you made 20 <laughs> mistakes or you failed to answer 20 times, doesn't matter. So I think that this, this notion of being always constantly learning is, is one of the values that we pass them that they can and should replicate in organizations. Culture is uh, uh, really the, 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 the fundamental part. You know, it's the, um, let me say, is, is the floor, ground floor. And then we move to the, the, to the first floor of this pyramid and it's more about processes. And uh, you mentioned a little bit the process of uh, validation, but uh, can you dwell a little bit more on, uh, on the processes that have been uh, uh, proven to be successful and as you said innovation is can be easy and difficult at the same time so for the audience you know can you mention some processes that can actually be easier uh, if well understood to uh, to implement Listen, I, uh, there are there are so many techniques nowadays right you can just find any technique any book on for example design thinking which is super powerful it's a fantastic set of tools, methodologies, and mindset, and a process. But if you just run five tools with some people, and they generate an idea, and you think, I have innovated, I guarantee 100% that you will fail. The combination of, as you said, the foundations of a way of thinking, right? And then on top of that, this rich toolkit. So design thinking is very powerful because it gives you a process and it gives you simple tools. But if you are not eager to learn and to listen, it will not generate any results. I can run 20 workshops, come with 20 great ideas that don't work. Generally speaking, the whole of innovation is, uh, is probabilistic. We say it's stochastic. So I can give you the methods that you must follow to get a great idea. But I cannot promise or guarantee that every time you will. So, Accepting that you may not get it and just try it over and over again, that's, uh, that's still part where the, the techniques and the culture interface. Uh, probably these days, I mean, design thinking, the business model, Canvas, this, everybody knows, you know, you've heard, you've used, you've seen it in a class, you've done it in a workshop. And we believe in the power of these things. But we don't believe that these techniques alone, however well you apply them, are enough to successfully innovate. Okay, so we start with the culture. We need to have strong culture. We need to apply a solid and proven uh, uh, methodology. And, uh, and as you said, you know, we should link everything together. You know? And this is, this is something we actually, we actually believe a lot. Um, as, as you mentioned, uh, we normally involved a lot of companies and alumni, managers, and testimonials and so forth. We have here a colleague that uh, just went uh, for a tour de force, you know, visiting uh, many, many companies uh, in, in the luxury sector, understanding how they, they, may, they create value, they innovate uh, and so forth. But then uh, uh, the idea also when we work with this company is that um, we're not happy just to do the, the fancy open innovation um, challenges and workshop, but we try uh, to have with them 
uh, a follow-up. We want to see that the idea that have been generated by our students will actually be applied somehow. Of course, students will generate several ideas. There will be a contest. A handful of them will be, uh, will be actually interesting for the company. But then normally when what we really forced and we've been successful many times to do it and say, okay, give it a try to this idea. You know, put some budget. You got the students working pretty much for free for you, but then put some budget on that and let's see if it works. And I can tell you I have a, I have a long string of uh, success story. And, uh, and yes, you know, it's only when you link things together, process, methods, culture, stubbornness a little bit, you know, to, to keep on trying as that you see results. So then what is the next step in your, in your model? I mean, you, you, you mentioned yeah, teams. So we, we have this, uh, I'll tell you briefly why we put this pyramid together. Why do we, you need a structure and why you need this group in a way? Because everybody knows a bit about, cult, uh, about innovation these days. Everybody tries something, you have a budget here, you have a team there, you have the open innovation here and there. But we say you need for these things to come together and work together. So as you said, the foundation is culture and then mindset. Then we have the, the tools and the methods. And then above that, we have what we call the trajectories or the patterns, which are examples of successful innovation that others have championed before you, before us. They solve problems before us. And uh, when I was a bit younger, I must say, I had a bit of a resistance to the idea that I could tell you, this is an innovation that worked, do the same thing, and that's innovative. Because if you copy, can it be innovative? And the truth is, you can never really copy-paste, but you can be inspired. I mean, if something has worked times and times and times again, why would it not work for you if you think of it carefully and get inspired by it? Uh, so, I mean, there are some of the super famous examples here. There is this pricing model called the razor and blade, where I give you a razor for free and I charge you an incredible amount for the blade. You would not normally buy the blade for that price, but because you already have the razor, you then become less sensitive to, to price changes, and so you just keep buying. I mean, why would that not work in a multitude of inter industries, right? And it, and it does. And uh, uh, we, we really talk a lot about impact because impact is, is also linked to, uh, to purpose. You know? And now um, every, every company wants to have a, wants to have a purpose. Uh, every employee uh, is looking for a company that, of course, is no innovative. Nobody wants to work for an old, rusty uh, you know, company and in, in a very uh, low profit uh, business and so forth. We're all looking for the, the apple of the case. Okay. Um, and impact uh, uh, is also about not doing the right things, but doing, uh, sorry, not doing the things right, but doing the right things, you know? So doing things right, it means that we eventually, you know, come up with the innovative product that has an impact on the market because it allows us to, to make money. But what about uh, doing the right things, so having the right impact for society. How do you reconcile these, these two parts? I, I, I completely agree. I mean, what we call impact is, uh, you know, any, any long-term change for the better, any improvement. So we say innovation means that you create more value. Value traditionally is measured in euros and dollars because it's easier, because that's the tradition that we're, where we come from. But we increasingly know and appreciate and see it everywhere. You can't measure value exclusively in currency. Uh, and yet the logic that impact should be an improvement that lasts and that it's an improvement in terms of creating value is essential to innovation. So we, we, we don't believe in, in separating the way you measure, like social, environmental, or financial uh, income we, we, uh, or value. We believe that the three of them are equally important, that they should all count as part of the impact. Reconciling them, I think, is, uh, is again, one of those, uh, the fact that they don't come, they are not reconciled by definition, is one of those legacy thoughts that we have in business. We only measured one, and so everything else was seen as a, 
you know, the trade-off or something that we have to compromise with. Uh, I think that there are big waves and, and trends towards measuring what we call ESG, or you can have multiple ways of defining it. And so the moment you start accepting this um, and measuring it, I don't think that the contradiction will, will exist anymore. Also, increasingly, value creation means catering to people who are sustainability-minded, like green-minded, uh, socially-minded. So increasingly, business models have these components. We have, a, we have the chap one chapter on social innovation that goes a long way basically in that direction. Uh, finally, I think that mostly the, our students' generation and a bit later also <laughs> the professor's generation, we're becoming aware that uh, when you have social unrest, there's not a single business model that works. If you go somewhere where there is a flood, there is no business model that works where there is a flood, or when there is civil war. There are no business models that work where you have no social or environmental stability. So it's no longer a nice to have. It's obviously a precondition these days. Okay, so, uh, uh, and I, I like the, the, the fact that you pointed out that the way we measure, we count things, okay, really drives at the end of the day what we do and the impact we have as an innovators and so forth. So, uh, this is quite, uh, uh, now this is quite uh, true uh, to our uh, uh, colleagues who are teaching accounting that uh, nowadays, uh, you know, accounting is no longer uh, about financial accounting, but it's more integrated accounting. This is, this is how also how we, we, uh, we've been innovating at the school because we need to teach uh, the kids that uh, we, we should start counting different things. And the moment you, sh you start counting different things, then you do things differently, and eventually you will innovate. And uh, putting everything together is not easy, but if we start early, it, uh, we definitely can have can have an impact, and uh, and before we open uh, to the to the question from uh, uh, the public, uh, you know, at home and present tonight, uh, I, I want to add something. Since you talk about your book, uh, I'd like to talk about the school for a second. In terms of innovation, we are um, uh, as a Turin campus. We will move in uh, 2024 in the center of Turin. Uh, in, in an area that uh, is going to be interested by uh, several investments by the Chamber of Commerce of Turin, which has been just presented last week, and it's going to be called the Innovation Block. So I, I like to make this uh, fil rouge, this link, that uh, today we're presenting this, this very important book, but also the school will be moving in the so-called Innovation Block and uh, as we did more than 200 years ago uh, with the uh, you know, establishment of our institution, uh, we will uh, play again uh, a major role in innovation with the uh, opening in Turin of the Blue Factory, which is the innovation hub of uh, ESCP, where entrepreneur, young entrepreneur or uh, you know, startups uh, and company can, uh, can work together and, uh, and eventually uh, innovate, not, not only uh, in the business, but also in the social uh, area.